Okay, let's go ahead and take this right from the beginning again here. Let's say that I want to use a piece of uh, three-quarter inch board here that I want to join to another piece. So that's going to be my work piece. <clears throat> I'm also going to choose to use a drywall screw. And that's what this system is going to be designed for, is to uh, <clears throat> work with this kind of a screw. Now the first thing what I'm looking at here is that I want the screw to come down with the, with the head countersunk like this. So the first thing I need to do is to look at where I want this, the screw to come down through, the size of the screw that I'm going to be using, and I want the screw head to be countersunk. The second thing I need to do is put a straight edge across the back side here and make sure that screw is not touching the straight edge. If it is, then I have to adjust the screw angle. When I'm satisfied with the angle of the screw like this here, then I'll go ahead and mark that where it's at. I'll mark that angle this way here. And then I'll also mark again where that's going to be going through here. So now what I got is that angle right here. And so I now put the bevel, bevel square to the angle here. And I get that angle lined up here. And I'll just finish that angle out through here because it's going to be entering right here. Okay. So it's going to be entering about right here. And then it's going to get countersunk <coughs> down to about here like this and still clear the edge. Okay, now that I have this here angle established here, I'll go ahead and cut this on a piece of plywood now. Now what I'll do is I'll transfer that angle now to a piece of plywood to be used as a template. And I'll go over and I'll cut this out now. Okay, so I got the angle set here and that's about uh, 21 degrees roughly on my uh, miter saw here for that angle. Now we have that cut right there. And now that becomes our template for our jigs. I have a piece of uh, maple stalk here now that I can use. That's a hardwood that will work better for the jig. <clears throat> the dimensions of this is about uh, about one inch by oh seven eighths. You can use three quarters, seven eighths. This is what I have available in my stalk here right now in, in maple. So mine is around seven eighths by an inch. I'm going to make the inch to be the uh, height wise and the 7 8 be the uh, width of the jig. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this roughly to about uh, 3 inches. That should work enough for any there. 3 inches. I'm going to cut two of these blocks out of the same piece and I'm going to make sure that there's the same width all the way down for this, to, this system to work properly. I have my saw set up on that there 21 degree, degree angle. I'll go ahead and cut these also on here as well. Both of my jigs cut here now, and after they've been trimmed here, it's about three and a half. I marked them to about three and a half inches. It could be anywhere between three and four inches, where you want to put them at. But what this is going to be now is we have our template sitting here like this here, and then we take our gauge block here, or our jig block, and lay that up like that, and that makes this nice and flat across here. And then, of course, we're going to do our X pattern here to get the center of these blocks, and then we're going to do our drilling. And... Uh, uh, when I get this done, then we'll come back and we'll start working on the actual system that makes this change out. Okay. Let's go over to the drill press now and drill down through here. The drill bit that will uh, be used for the shank of the screw first. Okay, that fits the head real good for a countersink. I was using brad point bits here so I can get a good accurate uh, hole drilled here on a starter hole. But when I do the actual drilling itself, I'm going to be using uh, jobber drills. And so, therefore, I need to get the, uh, use jobber drills here to line this up with on the board here now. In this case here, for the shank of the screw, it's about a 5 seconds drill bit. So now we have our original line drawn here on our workpiece here that we're going to use uh, to line everything up with. Now, 
what I want to do is I want to take my drill bit and I want to make sure that that's coming pretty close to the center of that. Since I have a small drill bit here, I can either shorten this down a little bit more to give myself more room to uh, grab a whole drill, which is that's one way I could do that, or else I can just uh, take this here drill bit until it's just a little bit to the top of our original line. And when it comes down, it'll come down above the center point of the workpiece, which is okay. So I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm that gives me a little more room here on the drill bit to to, to uh, chuck onto. So keep my drill bit like this. I'm going to put my block on here now, and I'm going to line this up so that my drill bit is coming to the top of the center of, the, of my line here. Okay, about like that. And I'm going to mark now, right here on the edge of the workpiece, right here because that's where that's going to get cut off at. It's very important that that is done that way, and I'll show you why. Need to line up the second block, and this will be for the, um, the head of the screw being countersunk. So the first thing we want to do here now is we want to mark down, which I have a little mark here, a mark where the center of the, or where the head of that screw is going to be countersunk inside, right here. And then I'm going to take the flute of the screw, which is the bottom here, the uh, bottom part here, which is the bell part of the, of the screw, which is about right here. That's the actual countersink right there of the screw. Okay, The head is right here, this mark here, but down here is where the actual drill bit is going to actually uh, stop at. And I have a 2164th bit that I use for that, for that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to the second line with my point of my drill and just come down a little bit past there. So I'm going to put it on my next block here, put the drill through here, and I'm going to bring it down until it lines up with that line. So I have to adjust this drill bit now until it lines up about right there. Okay, so now when I put this block on the workpiece, I have my drill bit here. I'll have to put a piece of tape here when I go to do the actual process here, but what I do now is I bring my block down. I'm in line now with this line here, right in line with that line. And so now I'll mark this block where this drill bit stops right here. And again, that is very important, this here, these two lines. So this line here on this block and this line here on this block was, is very, very close to the same place. But this one here is down a little bit farther. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cut these blocks off at these lines right here because that's going to be our reference now that we're going to be using for this jig system. Both of our blocks are cut off at those reference marks. Now before we continue on with the actual system of being able to switch out these blocks, that, that part of the jig, the fixture part of this, let's just go ahead and put these two blocks to work and just show how this can be done just using these two blocks for anyone who wants to just use it this way. Let's go ahead and put this to the test now and see how this works. I can get the uh, drill bit now established on the block here. So what we'll do is put the drill bit in the block here. And since this here is now the edge of the workpiece here, we can bring our bit all the way out until we're pretty close to the edge of the workpiece. About there, you can eyeball that up about like that. About like that. And then we can put that in our drill like this and then tighten it up at that point like that. Okay, so that gets us pretty close to the edge of the workpiece there. Okay, so now, the first thing to do here would be to get a reference line made so that both blocks can be lined up. So what I'll do is I'll just put a line here, just cross it like this. And I'll put my first block on here. And I'll line that up to the edge of the workpiece here to this. And I'll line up that line, the common clamp. That pretty common to most every workshop. Any kind of a F clamp or anything like this. So I'll just use this clamp here. Okay, so I'll do a line that up to the edge of the workpiece in the front. And to my reference line here. that block off.
and for a second I'll lock on here now. Okay, here we go. Now we got our drill bit, our drill stalk here. So let's see how this works. And let's put a screw through here now. This is maple board I'm using right here, by the way. And get a screwdriver here. And the head is now countersunk, and the drill bit, remember, has its own countersink in the front here for drywall screws will work good for that because it already has its natural countersink built into it. The flute, so let's take a look at this now. And there it is. You can see we got a nice countersink here head for the head. The bit comes through just or the uh, screw comes through nice. It does not protrude past the edge. And so we can get a good good joint here and it's countersunk nicely. So that's a two block system without using any kind of a fixture for changing out the blocks. That's just using the two blocks themselves and somebody can just use it that way there if they want to do it that way. The next part of this video now is going to be making a little bit of a system where I can change out these two blocks now conveniently. And that's the next part coming up. Whenever you do the shank hole you need to make it larger than the screw itself because you do not want the screw to screw in. You want to be able to twist like this here while it's in the hole. It has to be a larger screw or larger hole for the screw to keep on twisting. If it wasn't, then that means then it'd be screwing through this board and be pushing the other board away. So this has to always be larger. The hole for the shank always has to be larger in this hole here than going into the other board. Okay, so now, now I can go ahead and uh, take this out and we're going to go ahead and build a fixture for this now. quick way of doing this here would be to cut two strips like this to take your block these are about an inch about an inch wide or so take your block like this and line it up pretty much close to the front like this and then take another couple strips like this but they, they both have to be the same width because it's going to be a rail for the front and the, t and the bottom for reference so it's like that what we'll do then is we will take these here blocks here now and put that across square across on one block here like this then put your jig block here, the, the uh, drill block against that put your other one on here like that, the other rail Again, make sure that they are flush on the front. That's the most important part, is flush in the front. Just like it is here. Okay. Now turn it over and put your other block, that's the same reference this one here, take this and put this on the same, on the bottom now, same way. This becomes you know, your reference. Again, make sure that is flush to the front and that this and the other one are both the same size in width in order for this to work properly. Alright. And there's our there's our uh, jig block right there. Our fixture for hole net. That one goes in there. And the next one goes in like that. And so what we have now is remember we cut our blocks here in the front here to be referenced so that our when our bit comes through it comes through and ends up in a proper place on the workpiece so this could be our jig now for clamping now the next thing to do would be to we can either put some more blocks up here like this here to make it even so that we when we go to clamp it but let's go ahead and see how this works clamping this way here the whole system right here are two 
uh, drill jig blocks the fixture for putting it into our uh, counter head uh, screw head for the bit here the shank head or the shank bit for the uh, screw shank and two clamps so let's go ahead and put this there now and see how this works Take our fixture, put it any place we want to put it at. Let's say put it right there. And we'll just go ahead and clamp the fixture in place here. We'll take our shank drill jig first, put that in, and then clamp that to the workpiece itself, making sure it doesn't go forward, make sure it's tight to the front. So as long as this here is tight to the edge here, and this is tight to this here, we should be okay to uh, go ahead and drill this. block out and put this block here in. Change out our drill bit now. And normally you can have two drills work at the same time. One bit in each drill. And Take that block out, take our jig off, and there we have it. And there we have our pocket hole and our countersink. Double check, make sure that we're good here. And we're good. Our, our screw comes in nice through there. And there's our countersink. And there's a screw hole for the screw. Okay, so you can see how the jig works. It's just a matter of uh, building the two blocks and then just making this little fixture right here. One, this here is referenced off the edge of the workpiece because we cut the blocks even with the edge of the workpiece when we did the first part of this here. And then just slide it in. There's your fixture. Take that block out, put the next one in. And so that would be the complete system right there. Now it does require two drills. Now this is only so that we can do pocket holes with jobber drills. No need for a step drill with this here system. That's the only thing the system is good for, is just to uh, use for jobber drills if you don't have a step drill. But it does work. It's a makeshift uh, jig. And it does work. You can see how it worked. And uh, I think that it would be a nice thing to, for somebody to make if they don't have any kind of fancy drills or anything. All they have is jobber drills. I think it would be just fine to work with that. Okay, so that concludes this, uh, this video series here of uh, coming up with some sort of a makeshift drill jig using jobber drills. I should complete a system right there, the, the uh, two drill blocks and a little fixture here, a quick fixture you can build. And I just did this real quick here just to show how this could be done. And uh, you guys can really come up with some really good good ideas, good uh, ways to uh, expound on this and make it work for yourself even better and things. This is just a one suggestion way of doing pocket holes uh, if you don't have a step drill. If you have just all jobber drills to work with, then this is the system that you can come up with. And again, this is just a suggestion of how to do this. You can come up with even better jigs than this, better fixtures. So uh, have fun creative and being creative with this here and uh, come up with your own ideas that would be even more enhancing and more better for you. And uh, I'm just glad I gave some ideas here. And that's all this is, just to give you an idea of what you can do and have fun with it. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.